Chapter 14 of this Kapital is about the division of labor and manufacturing. Now this chapter is divided up into five subsections, but the way they're split up seems a little arbitrary to be honest. So we'll ignore those and go through it in a way that seems more logical. We know from chapter 13 that for the division of labor to occur, we have to basically assemble a large number of workers in the same place. We can either assemble a lot of workers doing different work or a lot of workers doing the same work. This is where Marx makes a distinction between two types of manufacturing. In the first one, the workers each contribute a part of a commodity. Let's say we're making a watch. All the different parts of this watch are being made by different workers. One makes the case, another makes the strap, and yet another makes the hands. Each worker doing something completely different. However, in the second type of manufacturing, all workers are doing the same small task over and over and over again, such as, for example, making paper. Sort of an assembly line style approach. Here, workers lose their individuality and become almost machine-like. That's what makes them very replaceable and thereby cheap for the capitalist. Both of these forms of manufacturing increase the specialization of the worker and increase the narrowing down of their skill set. But to increase productivity even more, we need to do the same with the tools that these workers use. To make manufacturing even more efficient, tools must be altered to fit a more specific and singular purpose, which is needed in this type of production. That's why there are so many types of hammers, for example. Specializing the workers and the tools leads to a very fast manufacturing process. Very little time is lost if you optimize the factory and the products can also be worked on constantly. This requires careful calibration and very exact timing, but if you get that right, then the labor process can proceed uninterruptedly, simultaneously and side by side. Now there was of course division of labor before capitalism. Marx calls this the social division of labor in a society. Let's say we want to make a pair of shoes. It would make sense that one person raises the cattle, the next hands the leather and the next stitches the leather together to make the shoes. This represents the natural division of labor in the process of producing something. And it is mediated by an exchange of currency and sort of arises naturally. The guy who stitches the shoe together has to buy the leather from the other guy first. Everyone in the supply chain is creating their own commodity. However, in the division of labor in manufacturing, this isn't the case anymore. The specialized worker produces no commodities and no currency changes hands during the process. It is all planned and organized by the capitalist. So the division of labor in a society can exist in many economic systems. The division of labor in manufacturing is unique to capitalism. It reduces the worker to be almost machine-like, performing simple steps over and over and over again. And in a plot twist that surprised absolutely no one, this sometimes isn't very good for the mental health of the worker. Here, no shit, Sherlock. First of all, this highly repetitive work just isn't very interesting and feeling replaceable isn't great either. And second, being a very small piece of a very big machine makes it hard to see the purpose of what you're actually doing. So workers just sometimes can't find real meaning in their work. So for anyone who sometimes feels like they're having a hard time finding meaning in their work or in their life, I have the perfect book for you. Shameless plug coming up. We just finished summarizing Man's Search for Meaning by one of my favorite psychologists, Viktor Frankl. It's a very insightful book, although I warn you, it's not for the faint-hearted. Still, I highly recommend you check it out.